All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, this is the video lecture for the cash chapter, ch cash topic. Um, and I'm starting here with this slide around just a reminder of where we are in terms of the stages of an audit. Uh, we had our six stages um, from our audit planning uh, topic that we reviewed a little while ago. And uh, we're going to be in kind of these middle three where we're going to focus on obtain an understanding of uh, the client in terms of the source of the transactions, um, the environment for thinking about inherent risk, and then the internal control for thinking about control risk, right? And so then all the information we get, gain in that stage two, we're going to use in stage three to come up with a, a risk of material misstatement, like actually quantifying those risks or at least labeling those, categorizing those risks, and then designing the audit procedures from there and then executing them. So we're, we're going to be in these middle stages um, and we're going to take the general knowledge we've had developed in the last section of the course and start focusing on how do we apply it to the different significant accounts and their related transaction cycles. And so there's your, uh, your chapter slide if you want to see that. Uh, we're largely going to focus on uh, the cash piece rather than the financial investments piece. And so um, you're going to see a fairly common set of learning objectives for a lot of these chapters going forward in terms of beginning with understanding kind of the source and nature of the account, identifying audit objectives, um, thinking about the uh, the nature of the process that is used to or that impacts the account, the controls, and then using the knowledge that you've gained to come up with risks, um, estimating control risk, and then uh, desi designing the further procedures. So we're largely using a lot of those stages. We're going to separate them a little bit into these different learning objectives. And notice here there's different priorities um, that I'm going to place on each relative to our, the testing. All right, so if you look at the first one, understanding the nature of cash, it's low priorities in the sense of you've kind of talked about cash a lot before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But obviously we need to understand, right, where's, um, where's the, where do we get this cash account from? Well, we get it from all the, the bank accounts that the, the firm has, whether it's checking accounts, that are used for the general purpose of the business, um, the payroll checking account. So a lot of times, because if you have a lot of employees, it's a good practice to set up a separate checking account just to clear payroll checks. Um, it provides an additional control. Uh, petty cash for depending on the kind of operation and savings account. Those are all sources of, of cash. Uh, and then we have also cash equivalents, right? Money market funds, CDs. Uh, other types of savings vehicles that are short-term and liquid in nature. And so you're going to see this, you know, I, I told you the audit risk model when we introduced it at first was very fundamental. And so we're really going to be coming back to this audit risk model again and again and again. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to try and present the learning objectives as in, within the context of the audit risk model. So learning objective number two uh, is related to assertions and audit objectives, identifying audit objectives. And so um, that's really thinking about audit risk for that, uh, for the account. And so uh, what kind of things do we care about? You know, let's think about the assertions and then how they apply to a particular account to come up with the objectives. Okay, so that's our learning objective there. And so if we think about the audit objectives, um, again, the assertion, we have assertions at the financial statement level, and then we have audit objectives that are at the account level, right? And so, um, kind of the application of the assertion at the account level is what produces the audit objective, right? So, existence is the assertion. Um, when we apply it to cash, the audit objective becomes substantiate the existence of recorded cash and then the occurrence of uh, cash related transactions. Right? Accuracy is an assertion and then when we apply it to the um, cash account it's determined the accuracy of cash transactions. Right? Um, completeness 
uh, is important um, from a cash disbursements per perspective. Usually, uh, cut off. Remember, is just the fact that we want to make sure the cash transactions within the period are the ones that are counted and recorded in the accounting records. Um, accuracy is making sure that those transactions are correct. Uh, rights. We don't have obligations in this right because rights are related to assets obligations are related to liabilities and and owner's equity and so uh, rights here is the, um, that the client actually has rights to the cash that they've recorded right so we'd look to see for example if they're listing a you know five different bank accounts well can we get evidence that suggests that the the client actually has those accounts at that bank and then presentation disclosure is how are we how is cash actually included in the um, in the financial statements uh, and is it done correctly including any notes that are related to that so when are we going to do um, and how much time are we going to spend for auditing cash uh, a lot of times the ending balance is relatively small um, but uh, a lot of things flow through cash so even though the beginning and ending balance is relatively small you can have a high volume of transactions that are going through the cash accounts right and so we're going to have to spend more time than possibly what another account that has a similar dollar uh, balance uh, than we would spend auditing that account is because there's a there's a large flow going through cash um, and it's liquid and so there's a not just a greater temptation, but a greater probability uh, of misappropriation, right? It's just easier, um, potentially easier to still steal at times. So we'll have to uh, think about that in terms of risk. And because at the end of the day, the inherent risk around cash is usually high, right? In the sense of um, it can, uh, if it's not controlled well, be easily uh, misappropriated and possibly even misreported because the temptation is usually to overstate assets right including cash so continuing on here with our audit risk model um, thinking about inherent risk uh, more specifically this is related to learning objective number four we're obtaining an understanding of the client and its environment um, and that I got high listed there because it's a high priority learning objective for us. And so when you think about these inherent risks, um, we can have inherent risk. A lot of times we talk about some of these risks in regards to a fraudulent situation, you know, a misrepresentation of uh, the financial statements or asset misappropriation. Um, but it could be due to error as well, right? It could be there's um, a higher likelihood that the individuals recording the transactions or compiling the financial statements could uh, induce error into it, right? And so uh, it could be related to either one. Um, the a lot of the business risks that you that will be identified in this stage oftentimes are related to asset misappropriation, as far as um, things like uh, the inventory, right? There's a risk of inventory um, uh, being stolen. Um, and so maybe the, and maybe the inventory is easily concealable, right? You have small things like iPhones and um, uh, other small electronic devices. That would be a situation where you, uh, some of the uh, more likely things that would happen might be related to asset misappropriation. Um, and when thinking about the inherent risk for cash, it, we're usually focused on what's the risk. This, what is the risk that the cash balance will be overstated because again most of the time uh, managers are, are going to have incentives to overstate assets and so we'd be focused on what could induce this overstatement um, so for example if checks were written um, but then not included in the, the cash account even though so even though they hadn't been deposited, usually the standard is when you write a check, that's the date in which it should be recorded. So if you write a check on 1231 at the end of the year, uh, it doesn't get deposited till January 5th, you're supposed to um, reconcile or you're supposed to record that as of 1231, right? But the temptation would be to say, oh, you know, um, it 
we'll just record it in the next year. Uh, another potential is the cache is stolen, um, but obviously not recorded. So um, there are different ways in which this could happen. Um, it could be deposits that are stolen, right? That's another example. So there's supposed to be deposits made, uh, let's say you have a point of sale, like a retail store, and so you have deposits that are supposed to be made on a regular basis, but then the deposit was not actually made and it wasn't recorded, right? That would, um, that, or excuse me, it was recorded as if it was deposited, uh, but not recorded in terms of it being stolen. Uh, would be another alternative to the one that's listed here. Uh, cash improperly used as far as, um, say for example, you're purchasing um, uh, you know, gifts for everyone in the office, um, and uh, but it wasn't authorized, right, by the the higher ups, or you know, you 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 bought um, seats to the World Series, right? Uh, but it wasn't wasn't authorized appropriately. So um, that's another inherent risk related to uh, related to cash. And when we say cash, we again we kind of mean cash in all its forms, not just uh, legal tender for um, physical bills and coins, but also um, checks and other uh, cash equivalents. Um, and so when we're doing our obtain and understanding of the client and its environment, we're thinking about right. Well, is this a an operation where there's a lot of cash that's being uh, exchanged so is is it a point of sale where we're receiving cash from customers or where the client is receiving cash from customers and is there um, situations where they have you know maybe they don't make deposits uh, they only make them once a day or only make them once a week and so there's a lot of cash potentially sitting on hand right those are the things we're thinking about when we're thinking about uh, inherent risks uh, related to cash I uh, keep moving on here to the next learning objective and next component of the audit risk model. So for control risk, uh, there's really kind of two learning objectives here, 11-3 and 11-5, related to obtaining and understanding of internal control. Um, really kind of 11-3 is making sure, kind of from a student perspective, making sure you understand the nature of cash receipts and cash disbursements process and the controls related to it. That's really kind of a student learning objective. And then 11-5 is the actual step that the auditors do in order to obtain an understanding of the internal control over cash. Right. So it's a little bit odd how they set that up. One is just to understand the nature in general, uh, kind of conceptual nature of the, the cash cycles. Um, and the usual controls over them. And then the other learning objective is, well, how, as auditors, how will we go about making sure that we understood a particular firm's internal control over cash? Um, but they're obviously very related. So uh, organizational structure uh, matters as far as internal control goes. Remember from flowcharts, for example, we spent um, a lot of time is spent on designating which department and which function is doing what set of activities. Um, and so uh, the, the goal here uh, as it relates to cash for this process is that all cash that was received, um, all cash that was supposed to be received was actually received, right? So let's say we have point of sale and we're getting cash from our customers. So if we're giving them products in exchange for cash let's make make sure that cash actually makes it into the cash register and then the cash register cash makes it into the safe and then the safe cash makes it into the bank deposit box right um, uh, internal controls are also meant to make sure that all the cash that was received um, was recorded um, and then deposited promptly for cash disbursements um, there we want to look to see or the way that the internal controls are supposed to be set up is to make sure that those disbursements are always authorized and they've been recorded, right? So um, if you're buying inventory, that that inventory purchase was authorized and uh, that it was properly recorded, as an example. And obviously with cash here, we're kind of tying, we're kind of connected a little bit to the other cycles, right? We're connected to the sales 
in the revenue cycle. We're connected to the um, accounts payable and uh, purchases cycle and, and the others. Um, so obviously this is a little bit, we're a little bit um, high level here when talking about cash receipts and cash disbursements. But obviously when we get into these other cycles, we'll talk about those examples or those particular areas. And then uh, another goal of the internal control process over cash is that there's adequate cash balances in the sense of making sure there's enough cash to pay for the um, short term and ultimately long term, but um, disbursements that need to be made by the company, right? Uh, but you don't want to hold too much cash because most of the time you're not going to get a big return or the our client will not get a big return. And so the internal controls are trying to help balance this goal between making sure you have enough to pay but not having too much cash to pay, right? It's kind of like the same thing with inventory. There's cost to having inventory just sit around. Um, and so you're always trying to balance how much inventory you need on hand and versus how much to, to fulfill our orders versus how to make sure that we're, the client is not um, incurring additional holding costs uh, more than what they have to. So a similar idea applies to cash. So how do auditors go about obtaining the understanding of the business processes? And so flowcharts are a predominant way, uh, narratives, and then interviews um, with client personnel, right? And so... Uh, sometimes the now the firms often have had to produce internal control documentation to show that they have set up a good internal control system over financial reporting um, and what now depending on how they document it there might need to be additional documentation that's done by the auditors um, and so uh, those are different means of, of evaluating the evidence, but also documenting the evidence that you actually receive as the auditor.